Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are once again going to talk about that major snowstorm heading to the Rockies, and we actually have an official snowfall forecast for that one coming up at the end of this video now. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below, where you can help support the channel. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, who do you think will see the most snowfall out of this one, and by who I mean which location, and also how much do you think they will see? Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Alright, now let's get into this video, and we're taking a look at our simulated radar here, and this is going to be by about 2pm on Monday, so the reason I'm not making this video tomorrow is because, well, it's pretty much going to be underway already. I might be updating this tomorrow, I don't really know, but if I feel like my forecast is fine, I'm going to leave it alone and this will be the final one. Alright, as you can see, we're going to start out with some rain showers really widespread throughout Montana, northern Wyoming, and then a lot of South Dakota and North Dakota there with some higher elevation areas there in Montana already seeing snowfall, uh, moderate rates of snowfall that is as well. You can see a few inches up there. Again, you can stay tuned to our, uh, our official snowfall forecast for this one at the end of the video where you will be able to uh, see how much you're expecting. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're just going to move on towards that night at about 1 or 2 a.m. on Tuesday uh, where we're going to start to see very heavy snowfall widespread. All right, so here we are taking a look at about 1 or 2 a.m., maybe 12 a.m. on Tuesday, September 8th. And as you can see, very widespread, heavy snowfall going on for Wyoming, portions of southern Montana. But it's really, uh, the thing is, you're going to see the high temperatures when the precipitation is around for Montana. I think that's why you're going to see a bit less. Wyoming, you're going to be seeing that snow, that precipitation during the low temperatures. Uh, and that's what's going to make the difference and make it a much more snowy situation down there for Wyoming. Uh, you can even see in through South Dakota, so there's some mountainous regions there, and also in through Nebraska as well, uh, you're seeing some heavy snowfall cross into those borders. You can see our low pressure system down there right in the middle of the four corner states or the crosshair of the four corner states, a 995 millibar low pressure system. So this is a pretty strong storm we're talking about, guys. Let's take it to about the morning hours, the very more early morning hours, maybe 6, 5 a.m. here. Uh, on the same date and as you can see still some heavy snowfall there for Wyoming it's starting to move into Colorado we're also seeing some of that snowfall move into Utah still there for South Dakota and Nebraska as well although you can see some of those greens mixing in that's because we're obviously getting a little bit higher in the temperatures by these hours so that's what's going on there what we're going to do is we're going to move on towards the afternoon hours of Tuesday where we're going to really start to see this one impact Colorado more and then we're going to move towards the end of the storm and then we're going to start talking about the model guidance as far as total snowfall and then also our direct weather snowfall forecast for this one at the end of the video. Alright, so here we are at the afternoon hours of Tuesday. As you can see, we're going to have some very windy conditions there. Uh, so we have a high pressure system of 1,035 millibars, very high pressure system there. Uh, pretty darn close to that 992 millibar low pressure system. Uh, you can see the very close isobars, those lines in there, when they start getting very close, it's going to indicate some windy conditions, especially there along, I think, the New Mexico and Colorado border there, uh, especially in throughout the Rocky Mountains, the southern Rockies there. It's going to be a windy situation alongside these heavy snowfall amounts. So although I don't expect blizzard conditions, it's going to be very, very windy uh, with that snowfall. So visibility might become an issue uh, at a lot of points here. And I'm not going to rule out blizzard conditions, I guess. I don't think we'll see blizzard warnings, but... If you're some, for some reason in those very, very high elevation areas with the heavy snowfall and also the very windy conditions, uh, we could be looking at some near blizzard conditions. All right, now let's go ahead and move it towards about 8 p.m., maybe 6, 8 p.m. here on, on Tuesday, September 8th still. And as you can see, those uh, heavier snowfalls are moving more towards southern Colorado here. Uh, and in through New Mexico as well. Kansas, you're starting to mix in with some snow there on the very western edge of the state. Uh, I've seen situations like this before. Uh, let's go ahead and move it towards the morning hours, maybe 6 to 8 a.m. on Wednesday, September 9th here. And as you can see, that low pressure system has weakened dramatically, and we see that high pressure system pushing everything way further south in a rush. Uh, and what's going to end up happening is we might see some moderate snowfall there for Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, uh, and some low-lying areas in New Mexico. Although the likelihood of accumulations here, I am 
kind of thinking is going to be pretty limited. Although you might see moderate snowfall for quite a while, I think those ground temperatures might struggle. Uh, we'll see that in the total snowfall forecast uh, that we're expecting some pretty limited amounts. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at that cyclonic vorticity real quick. Then we're going to take a look at some of the temperatures to see what you're expecting. Uh, and then we're going to, again, take a look at the snowfall on the models. And then finally, our direct weather snowfall forecast for this one. All right, now here we are taking a look at that cyclonic vorticity. And this just shows us where a lot of that energy is at, a lot of the spin in the atmosphere. Starting out at about the afternoon hours of Monday, you can see there is some reds up there for the northern Rockies. This is when we were just seeing showers and um, some snow mixing in. But as we move it towards the afternoon hours of Tuesday when the storm is at its peak, you can see very strong cyclonic vorticity there. Uh, very strong storm system. Very interesting for this time of year. And out of the snowstorms I've experienced for this area, I think it's probably about a month ahead of schedule. Back in 2013, we had a very major snowstorm on about October 6th, and that was a very early one, but this one is much, much earlier. That storm was a much stronger storm, however, but that was a month later into the year, so really it did have a better opportunity then. This is a little bit less impressive just because of how strong that storm was. Uh, but it is very impressive for this time of year. It's only a major snowstorm because it's September 6th and it's very unexpected uh, this early on. All right, now here's the temperature anomaly. So I just want to show you how much below average it's going to be. This is Tuesday afternoon. Again, when we're at about the peak of the storm. Uh, and a lot of those pinks, that's where we're at about 20 to 30 degrees below average Celsius. So just extremely far below average. And that's what it takes to get a snowstorm like this. You need cold, cold temperatures. Here's, uh, this is going to be the high temperature, so this is right at that same hour. As you can see in the Rockies, we're experiencing a lot of the 20s and even teens there for the very high elevation areas, uh, which again, is very far below normal. 30s is the high temperature even for uh, areas like Denver, uh, even far eastern Colorado, and through portions of Kansas, Nebraska, and then widespread 40s throughout a lot of those green areas. The yellows indicate 50s, so I mean very cold temperatures for September 6th through 8th. Anytime in that time frame. Because listen, usually we can see heat waves this time of year. Think of that. We've seen 90s. I think these areas that are getting snowfall even saw 90s like two days ago. So this is extreme for this time of year. I just want to put an emphasis on that. Now here's the low temperatures that same night. And it's it hasn't cooled down much in a lot of areas. But for the Rockies, as you can see for Colorado and Wyoming, we see a lot of lower teens there. Uh, I see 11, 12, 14 degrees. Uh, even some whites showing up indicating maybe single digits. So, I mean, very far below normal. Obviously, nobody really lives up in those very high elevation areas, uh, but still just extremely impressive. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the modeled snowfall totals and then our forecasted snowfall totals. All right, now here we go. We're taking a look at the GFS first off. Uh, and this one's doing it... It's, it's thinking this is going to be a much more major storm than even I think. And for both of these model frames, what we're using is the accumulated positive snow depth change. And the difference between this and total snowfall is this is only counting the snow that the model calculates will accumulate uh, based on ground temperatures, air temperatures, things of that nature. So this is going to give us a much better outlook. Now, when it's 20 or, you know, 10 degrees outside, you don't have to use this. You can use total snowfall. But when we're really close to freezing or when it's very early in the year like this, this is a much more useful tool. So anywhere in the blues, we're expecting under three inches of snow. In the purples, three to six. In the pinks, six to 12. And you can see the greens for high elevation areas. That's 12 inches plus. Now, this is one of the more aggressive models with this system. Let's move on to the NAM, which is a much more uh, conservative outlook here that I agree with a little bit more. I do think that 10 inches plus is possible, uh, but really I don't think it's likely for very widespread areas. So again, three inches is for three inches and below is in the blue regions. Uh, in the purples, we see three to six inches in the pinks, six to 12. Uh, and you can see the pinks are pretty exclusive for higher elevation areas. I think with the time of year we're in, that's a lot more realistic. All right, let's get into our, uh, forecasted snowfall totals here from direct weather. If you're in this white region, we're going to take it layer by layer. This is what we did all year last year. This is what I expect to do all year this year. It's just much more easier for the viewer, I believe. If you disagree, you can let me know in the comments. Uh, but I've gotten better feedback using it this way. It's easier to talk about as well. We see, basically, if you're in this area, you're expecting anything from just seeing flakes to three inches of snow uh, in this white region. So it can vary anything within that. 
If you're in this lighter blue region, three to six inches of snow expected. And this is pretty exclusive for some higher elevation areas. Although I must mention that uh, we do see Denver in this region. So this is, that's pretty much the biggest city we see in this. Obviously that's pretty common. And then for this darker blue region, we see six to 10 inches of snow. So you can see that I definitely agree more with the NAM model than the GFS model. But again, we might start trending towards more higher snowfall totals. If that occurs, I'm going to be updating this probably uh, tomorrow morning. We see Denver, you're right on the edge of that six to 10 or three to six inch region. So I'm expecting you to be anywhere from about four to seven inches of snow. I know most of the viewers that actually live in this uh, snowfall region are probably actually in Denver because I'm sure Denver encompasses more population than the surrounding regions uh, in those snowfall totals, although I, I'm not completely sure on that. Now, anyway, for today's comment of the day, yesterday we did a tropical outlook and I asked you guys, when do you think our next tropical storm will be? An unknown player said, I think the next tropical storm should form by early next week. Keep in mind, this comment was left on Saturday, so he's t he or she is talking about uh, this week, actually, from the time I'm making this video. And I agree, I think by Wednesday, we'll probably see one of those systems in the Atlantic become at least a tropical storm. Anyway, for today's patron island of the day, we actually added two new diamond patrons yesterday. So shout out to you guys. We see our diamond patrons now, Madbert, Dan Hazard, Mark J, Alicia Davis, and then alongside our platinum patron, Donna Carnes. If you'd like to support the channel, you can check out our Patreon in the description and pinned comment down below. If you'd like to be on this end screen, you can also do that. All right. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.